Six years ago, I was 22 and started dating the most perfect guy on the planet. I saw Sparks immediately, fell hard for him within the first few dates, and he said he fell just as hard. We had an amazing first year together. I mean, literally out of a fairy tale romance novel. I was so in love with him, I couldn't see straight. <sighs> exactly one year into dating, his high school sweetheart showed up on the scene with a baby she claimed was his. The timing of it was correct from the last time he'd seen her. The kid was about two years old. She claimed that she didn't know who the baby's father was at first, but now was certain it was my boyfriend and that she needed him in the child's life. Fast forward, a DNA test proved that the baby wasn't his. Okay. <laughs> Where do you think this story's going right now? I have no idea. Like, I thought, yeah, okay. You thought this was the big moment of the story? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> okay. I was so relieved and figured that our relationship could continue forward after this minor bump in the road. But the baby scare freaked him out. He claimed that he was still in love with me, but that he'd stared into the face of fatherhood and that kind of commitment, oh my God. and he just wasn't ready. So he broke up with me and went on a solo trip around Europe. I've done that. <laughs> I said not had a baby scare, but I've been like, you know what? I'm going to go find myself. Yeah, I'm going to – goodbye. I'm going to go to Europe. Okay. 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 I was devastated beyond words. Aww. I couldn't eat, sleep, or even breathe. About two weeks in, I decided I couldn't be without him, so I texted him that I needed to talk. He didn't respond. No one should ever text anyone that. <laughs> like, that's just mean. <laughs> need to talk. So, a few days later – I texted him again and said that my period was late. I was probably pregnant. And while I wasn't asking for him to come back, I just wanted him to be aware. This wasn't true. I knew 100% that I was not pregnant. Why would you... Like, knowing that he was going to Europe because he wasn't ready, mm. why would you do that? Yep, say, like, the one thing that would, yeah. like, freak him out even more. Yeah. He called me immediately and asked what my plans were. I told him that I planned on getting an abortion, but I felt like he should know. He told me not to do anything rash and that he would change his ticket and come home as soon as he was able. When he got home, he told me that he loved me, that he wanted to be with me, that his ex-girlfriend scare wasn't my fault, and he was sorry he bolted and that he wanted to keep the baby. Oh, <laughs> I mean, that's great, but... Oh, I'm getting lost in the lie. Like, this is not true. <laughs> None of, of this is true. None of this is true. So now, you know, your partner has come back, declared love for you, okay. said that he wants to have this baby. This baby is not real. Yeah, okay. I hadn't really planned for that to happen so quickly. So perhaps, fortunately, I got my period maybe two weeks later and was able to convince him that the blood was probably a miscarriage. Oh, my God. I no, was, you don't, you don't lie. I was, I was too scared. Don't lie about any of this. No, you don't lie about any of this. Oh I was too scared to disappoint him and even pretended to drive myself to Planned Parenthood to support my fake miscarriage story. He never asked for any proof. He was deeply upset that the baby didn't make it and I pretended to be upset about the miscarriage Yeah, because too. he trusts you. Yeah, That's why he, he's not asking for proof. He thinks it's real. Oh, my God. We pretty quickly both realised that it was probably for the best and our relationship more or less picked up where it had left off before. We aren't perfect, but I truly love him. He supports me in my career and now being a stay-at-home mum. He's amazing, he's wonderful, and I can't live without him. We got married about three and a half years ago. In December, we had our first baby, an amazing, beautiful little boy who we both adore. Everything we have is amazing. He's in the Navy. We live in an amazing little beachside community in California. He's a wonderful dad. I could not ask for more. But I know in my heart that all of it, everything we have, is based on a lie. The guilt eats me up every night and day. So he still doesn't know? He doesn't know. Oh, my God. And they're married. They've had a kid. It's been, like, many years have passed. And she's just like, would I have any of this? Would you still be with me if, you know, you knew the truth? If I wonder what else she's lied about. I feel like mm -hmm. if you do something like this, you would lie about a lot of things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would love to know, Sahani, do you think that she should tell him? Oh, God, that's hard. I don't know. Because I really feel for this guy. Like, mm. he hasn't done anything wrong. Mm. Like, 
Not really. Like, I, I can't think of anything that's that wrong. Maybe, yeah. maybe the like breaking off suddenly and going off to Europe wasn't the kindest way to end the relationship. Yeah. But that probably doesn't justify what's happened. No, exactly. Like, I don't know. This is really hard. <laughs> Would you want to know? I, I think that like, this is like an interesting question about do you tell the truth knowing mm. that it might destroy a family it might destroy mm. his happy it'll, it'll probably destroy his happiness mm. and it'll probably split up like you and your partner and your kid like going between two different homes like a lot of bad could come from telling the truth mm, that's so, do so, you, true. so do you tell the truth yeah. i think i would do whatever is in his best interest mm. because yeah she's i'm not her biggest fan right now no <laughs> no, no and if she just wants to tell the truth to like alleviate guilt exactly too bad Mm. gone too far yeah maybe this is just something she has to live with now my boyfriend uninvited me from his sister's wedding so that he could bring his girl best friend but i'm going anyway for starters i love my boyfriend's family i do not love his girl best friend my boyfriend's been friends with this girl since childhood and he admits that for years he was in love with her but she just kept leading him on she would flirt with him say things like Oh, but like, could you ever imagine if we were together? Maybe that would be amazing. Making marriage packs, things like that. But then she would always get a boyfriend and friend zone him. And this cycle of flirting with him when she was single and acting like they were just friends when she had a boyfriend continued all the way into college until he met me. Now, I've only met his girl best friend a few times because she lives in a different state than us, but every time has been far less than enjoyable. The girl is awful, and she thinks everything between us is a competition. Who knows him best? Who would be a better wife? Who would be a better wife? Like, why are you? That's so weird. But for some reason, it always comes back to who's closer with his family. And she always talks about how his mom is like a second mom to her, and she just really feels like she's a part of their family. Okay. Cool flex. Like, don't know what to tell you about that one. About a week ago, my boyfriend's sister's wedding invitation came in the mail and it was addressed to him, but included a plus one. Obviously that plus one was meant for me. Like we've been dating for years. It was just assumed or so I thought. Now the first few days after getting the invitation, he was talking to me about plans, plane flights to go to the wedding, things like that. But after a few days, he stopped mentioning the wedding. And if I brought it up, he would change the subject. So two days ago, I get home and my boyfriend's in the bedroom on the phone on speaker with somebody. And I would know that nasally whiny little voice anywhere. It was his girl best friend. And she was talking about what she should wear to the wedding, which I didn't think was weird. She always talks about how close she is to his family. So obviously she'd be invited, right? So I walk into the bedroom and say hi, say hi to his girl best friend on the phone. And he looks startled, which is weird because I've, said hi to her on speaker before and he didn't seem to have a problem with it. And I tell her that I look forward to seeing her at the wedding, which is a lie, but I'm nice, okay? I'm trying to be nice. Tell me why this girl says, oh, I'm so glad you got an individual invitation. I was starting to feel a little bad about taking your plus one. Taking my plus one? Who's taking my plus one? So my boyfriend really quickly tells this girl that he has to go and I'm like, yeah, you better hang up the phone because you have some explaining to do. And I stand there, my arms crossed, and I'm like, okay, what, what is she talking about? And he tells me that she didn't receive an invitation to the wedding. Shocking, considering how close she says. Like part of the family, that's what she said. And he said that she called him distraught, saying that it would mean everything to her to go to this wedding and to celebrate with the people that she loved the most. People that you love the most. You didn't get invited to the wedding. So I tell him, I'm like, I think that that's really strange to make your plus one not your girlfriend at your immediate family's wedding. And he was like, you know, they've known her forever. I don't think it'd be that weird. And I was like, well, she didn't get invited. So, and he has the nerve to go, well, neither did you. I'm floored, honestly. The fact that he said that, I was like, Yes, I was invited. That plus one was meant for me. I've literally talked to your sister about her wedding multiple times. That plus one, just because it didn't have my name on it, did not mean that it wasn't meant for me. And he said, well, you know what? Your name isn't on it. I can choose who I want as my plus one, and I'm taking my friend. 
So I storm out, go to my best friend's place and proceed to just cry and tell her what happened. Honestly, I was just feeling so embarrassed. I know I shouldn't feel embarrassed, but it's just like, how could he not even want me there? But that is when I got an unexpected call from my boyfriend's sister. She told me that my boyfriend just called her to tell her the situation and she was livid. She said that clearly the plus one in that invitation was me. She apologized. She was like, you know, I was just trying to save some customization costs, but if I would have known he was gonna pull this, I should have just put your name on it. Like that was clearly intended for you. I'm so sorry if it came across that I, I didn't want you at my wedding or that you weren't invited, you're 100% invited. I want you there. The best part though, is she starts talking about my boyfriend's girl best friend. And she says, there's absolutely no way I'm letting that little leech at my wedding. My boyfriend's sister goes on to tell me that his entire family despises this girl because she let on my boyfriend for years, is rude, selfish, ungrateful. Every time she was over at their house, she would leave a mess, never clean it up. Basically, she said that she was just not a nice girl and it was intentional that she didn't get an invitation to the wedding. So even though his girl best friend was saying that, you know, she was like family to that, that was a lie. They don't talk. She tries to reach out apparently and they all ignore her. Then she tells me that she has revoked her brother's plus one and will be mailing me my individual invitation. She even told me that even if I make the decision to dump my boyfriend over this, she would still love to have me at the wedding because she feels like I've become part of the family at this point. I'm part of the family. Oh my, how the tables have turned. So I know for a fact that I'm gonna be at that wedding. Now, will I be attending with my boyfriend or not? That's to be decided. My boyfriend kicked me off of the European vacation he's going on with his best girlfriend, but little does he know, I'm going anyway. My boyfriend and I have been dating for a few years and honestly, we don't have that many issues. The only one always revolves around his best girlfriend. My boyfriend met this girl in college and she is like a little leech. I swear every time I turn my head, there she is. Like never invited, but somehow always there. I have no idea why this girl thought she had an auto invite to any date that me and my boyfriend went on, but he didn't seem to have a problem with it. And I was honestly reaching my breaking point. I hated to be the girl that was like, you have to choose me or her. But listen, I don't claim to be a chill girl. So I was about to do it. But right as I was reaching my final breaking point, she magically gets a boyfriend. Hallelujah. It was the best day of my life. Honestly, like I was never happier. This was amazing. Except when I met him for the first time, he looked strangely like my boyfriend. Like could be my boyfriend's brother. Was it weird? Yes. Was she still so rude to me? Yes. But she wasn't around as much. And a lot of the time she brought her boyfriend, which served as a buffer. And she seemed to be way less flirty and touchy with my boyfriend now that she had a boyfriend. So, you know, I was taking what I could get and I just felt a sense of relief. That was until my boyfriend brought up the idea of going on a couple's vacation. Now, I thought he meant just the two of us. And I was like, babe, that's so romantic. But what he was really insinuating was going on a trip with the two of us and his best girlfriend and her new boyfriend. And I was like, babe, as much as it sounds so fun to go to multiple European countries with you, your doppelganger, a woman who hates me and is in love with you, I'm gonna take a hard pass on that one. But let me tell you, this man begged, he begged for me to agree to go on this trip. And what can I say, I'm a softy. And I agreed. I was like, you know what? What could possibly go that wrong? As the trip was getting closer, all we had booked was our flight. So I started asking like, hey guys, like where do you want to stay? What kind of things do you want to do? And they just kept saying, you decide whatever you want. Like you seem to have it handled. I seem to have it handled. I've never booked a European trip before. Like, what do you think I am? I'm not a travel agent. I'm not experienced in this, but I was like, you know what? If they're gonna be like this, I'm gonna just plan the trip I want. We can stay in the hotel that I wanna stay in, go to the places that I wanna go because they're not giving any input. So I spend so much time making reservations, all the plans, and by the end, I sent everyone an itinerary of the most beautifully crafted 
European vacation. And they're all ecstatic. They're like, wow, this is perfect. You did a great job. And I was like, wow, I really thought I was going to get some arguments on this. So I was pretty, pretty, pretty pleasantly surprised. But I should have known better. I should have known better than to start getting excited about this trip because about a week before we were supposed to leave, my boyfriend comes into my apartment and asks me if we can talk. And I was like, am I about to get dumped right now? That is how serious he looked. So he sits me down and tells me that his best girlfriend and her boyfriend broke up and she is incredibly upset about it and also doesn't feel comfortable being the third wheel on our European vacation. And ugh, I kind of felt like a bad person, but I was like kind of excited inside because I was like, now I just get to go to Europe with my boyfriend, which is what I wanted. Obviously I was like, oh, I feel bad for her. Breakups are the worst, but like, I really did not want to go to Europe with her. I was like, oh yeah, I totally understand. Um, I'm sure that she can get some of her like flight money refunded. And he looks at me and is like, no, I don't think you understand. Like I, I need to be there for her right now. And I think it would be really good for her to still go on this vacation, but just have it be the two of us. I was laughing so hard, like snort ugly laughing. That is how ridiculous this was to me. And I was like, absolutely not. That, that is not happening. And he was like, you know, she doesn't have any girlfriends here. Why? Why do you think she doesn't have any girlfriends? That's my only question to you. And he was like, don't be like that. Like, it's not like that. And basically we got in this huge fight and I was like, you are not going on a European trip that I planned, I planned with another woman. And he was like, we're just friends. I'm like, okay, does she know that? <laughs> because also I don't go on romantic European trips that was supposed to be a couple's trip with somebody that I'm not in a couple with. Okay, that's weird. It's weird and I am not okay with it. We were just continuing to argue and eventually he's like, you know, I need to go be there for her right now. I can't deal with this and leaves. And immediately then I know in my head, it's over. This relationship is over. But my European vacation is not. Now, my boyfriend did offer to pay for my cancellation fee for my flight. But I said, you know what? Don't worry about it. Because I knew I wasn't gonna cancel my flight. I was gonna move it to the flight leaving six hours after theirs. Luckily, my best friend is a lot more loyal than my boyfriend. So I call her up, say, hey girl, I need you to take the next week off of work because you are going to come with me to Europe. I called up every single place that I made a reservation at, all the hotels, the restaurants, the shows, and told them to not let anybody take my spot or my reservation unless they show proof of ID that they are me, since everything is under my name. And at some places I actually had to pay an extra fee for the accommodations, but it is so worth it to me. So when my boyfriend and his best girlfriend show up at their hotel, they're not gonna be able to check in. When they try to go to any of the dinner reservations at the restaurants I made, they're not gonna be able to be seated. But you know who is? <laughs> Me and my best friend. We're about to have the best trip of our lives. And when I run into my boyfriend at one of the first reservation spots and he's shocked to see me, I'm gonna make it clear that I'm on a breakup trip as well. So I hope that my boyfriend and his little girlfriend have the best trip of their lives with nowhere to stay, no plans, and now both on their breakup trips. Okay, y'all, what is the craziest thing that you've ever done for love? I'll go first. So I met a girl on TikTok, and we were talking for about a month before I booked a flight from Los Angeles to Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, and the flight, it was originally supposed to be for three days. I ended up staying with her for 10 days, so I extended my flight. And when I was there, she asked me to be her girlfriend. I mean, obviously, I said yes. So when I got back home to California, I mean, I waited about three weeks. <laughs> I waited about three weeks and then I packed up my car, grabbed my dog and drove all the way across the country for her. Um, 2,800 plus miles, um, about three days, 36 hours. The first day I drove a straight 15 hours on my own and I moved in with her after three weeks. She's now my wife. <laughs>
I'm in shock and I need to tell, I need to tell people about what just happened. So I've dressed to get dinner tonight and um, this man is on his way and he's booked dinner and he's coming to pick me up and he texts me as I'm getting ready like half an hour before and he goes, I kid you not, word for word, all right you shallow bitch, don't judge my car, I've had it since I was 18 and no one has a car in London. This is our second time meeting and um, he is a over 30 year old plus man, he has a normal career and we barely have a friendly relationship. You know, it's only our second time getting dinner together. And I was just like, what? Like no one, I barely call my friends cuss words. And if we ever do playfully call each other bitch, it's very, very, very few friends in person. And it's like people that I'm very close with. I have very little tolerance for cuss words, especially with men I go on dates with. So this really threw me off. And I told him, I was like, what? Like, why would you call me that? And then as I'm getting ready and I talk to my younger brother and I told him what happened, he goes, why, don't go to dinner. And I initially didn't feel like I could have just canceled because I felt bad that this person was on their way. But then I thought to myself, you know what, like, this is not okay for me. And these are my standards. I don't want to get dinner with someone that can just call me that whenever they want. And so literally as he got here, I, I let him know. And he calls me and complains and says that it's rude that I intentionally let him know now that he's driven across the city. And um, when I explained to him, hey, like I didn't know how I was feeling. Like I didn't realize how upset it made me feel and I was being super respectful. He literally hung up on me. And then 10 minutes later sent me a long ass apology. <laughs> this is a grown man over 30 thinking it's okay to call a woman a bitch before coming to pick her up for dinner. But you know what? When one door closes, another opens because another sweet boy who is planning a date began texting me about the next date that he was planning for us. And um, moral of the story is don't be afraid to cut people off on the first go because what the hell? My boyfriend has been secretly texting with my best friend and I need your guys' advice and just like let me know if I overreacted but I really think that there is something messed up going on. So things between me and my best friend have not been normal for a while now. About a month ago for her birthday we had made dinner plans. She blew me off like super last minute and so then I was bored, had nothing to do, invited my boyfriend to go have dinner with me because I had made reservations and he was busy too which you know now looking back at it I'm like hmm, maybe they were together that day. I don't know. Conspiracy theory? But I've been giving my best friend the benefit of the doubt because she's been going through a lot. She just recently had a breakup with a really, really toxic guy that I do not like. And one of the reasons I don't like him is because that guy actually used to be best friends with my boyfriend. And he just caused a lot of problems in our relationship. He was like a very disrespectful person. But anyway, that's beside the point. So about a week ago, I'm laying in bed with my boyfriend and I see a text message pop up on his phone because he's like scrolling through TikTok. And I notice that it is my best friend's name. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, well, maybe it's like somebody else with the same name. Like, no, my friend has a very unique, specific name. Like, I highly, highly doubted that he is talking to somebody else with the same name, okay? But he didn't know that I was looking, so I just kind of was like, you know, I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to sleep this off. It's a little bit weird that my best friend is talking to my boyfriend. They, I didn't even know that they had each other's phone numbers. But maybe they're like, I don't know, planning a surprise party for me or something, even though my birthday is like eight months away. A few days go by, I've kind of forgotten about the whole thing, and I'm in his car, and on his Apple CarPlay pops up my friend's name. She has just messaged him. So now, I don't have to act like a crazy girlfriend, like I can actually legitimately ask, why is my best friend texting you? 
and you could tell like he was so nervous that he had been caught talking to my friend like I could see his face just went completely white but he told me that the reason why he was talking to my best friend was because she was having a really hard time with the breakup from the toxic guy and he was kind of helping her through it because he used to be friends with him too so basically he was just like lending her a listening ear and a shoulder to cry on and that seemed like you know a legit excuse i was like okay yeah but why wouldn't my friend tell me why wouldn't you tell me why is this being kept a secret from me what do you guys think but i'm a virgo and i'm sorry like that explanation is just not gonna help me sleep better at night so the following evening when i was sleeping over his place i decided that while he was sleeping i was gonna go through his phone because i just needed confirmation that the conversation between him and my best friend was not like weird there was nothing weird being said and also i don't know at this point in time i'm just not feeling very sure about my best friend so i go into his phone yes i know his passcode and the messages i see um are a little concerning Basically, in the messages, he's gassing her up. He's saying that she's so beautiful, that she deserves better, that, you know, she, she could do so much better than that guy. And basically saying everything that I could be saying to my friend, but my friend is not confiding in me about her breakup. And I don't know, the messages just made me feel super, super uncomfortable. So I decided to step away from the whole entire situation and relationship. And now I'm wondering if I did the right thing or if this was like super suspicious and sketchy and was going to lead to something potentially bad happening. What do you guys think? my best friend is black the amount of times my childhood best friend used me for this line i could be completely minding my business somewhere and then i'm just pulled out out of the blue like a literal pokemon ball for my friend to beat racist allegations uh you know what you said there's kind of racist uh sorry what did you say that's what Tammy, i choose you so my childhood bestie was honestly not the brightest tool in the box and i honestly think a lot of the things she said was down to pure ignorance because they were just so stupid like she would say things that she thinks is a compliment or a normal statement having no idea that it's offensive so for example i was getting bullied by these girls in the year above me and she just drops well they're clearly jealous of you because you're like the only black girl that's clean and actually looks after herself whereas they're just so rough and dirty um hello hey hello i don't think that's the vibe so then i'd literally be there having to defend my bullies and i'm like yeah they're pricks but you can't say that because that's still racist and offensive to me like as a black person and she'll literally be like no not in a racist way you know i could never be racist you're my best friend and you're black also, I've always predominantly dated black men. So a lot of the guys I spoke to were African and had like typical African names from the countries that they came from. So one day I started speaking to this guy that had like a standard English name and she goes, oh, finally, someone with a normal name. Is this bitch for real? I had to save the best for last, of course. So she was a lesbian, right? And she had this girlfriend whose family was against same-sex relationships. So obviously she was really upset about this. So obviously I was just like helping her get through it and supporting her. And then she drops, no, but her ex-boyfriend is literally black. How are you allowed a black boyfriend, but I can't meet your family? And I'm just there like, what have we got to do with this? Fuck 50. I'm like, what do you say fuck me for? Black, 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 blackity, black, black. Ah, uh ah, -uh. rent free. At that point, I barely gave up, like seriously. Of course, naturally, we grew apart. Get ready with me while I tell you a story about a time I cheated on my boyfriend and don't regret it. Now I would like to preface this by saying I do not condone cheating. It's not healthy. It's not good. But... I tried to find, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel in every situation. And um, let's just say the situation brought me back to life and made me wake up and realize that I was not happy. Now, to start this off, you should know that I was in a very, very toxic relationship for about three and a half, four years. And things weren't going very well. Now, where the issue started is my ex and I were preparing for Valentine's Day. And right around the time of Valentine's Day, he decides that he is going to go on a boys trip to Scottsdale, which I was fine with. I didn't mind when he went out of town, but he lets me know the dates on it. And I start laughing. I was like, excuse me. I was like, that's over Valentine's Day. It was like, it fell over a whole weekend. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, we have plans for Valentine's Day. We had a reservations to a really nice restaurant and he was just making adverse plans to go off with boys on a boys trip on valentine's day now this man was slick so what he did was is he had remembered that my girlfriends had talked about going on a trip to mexico when we were had been all hanging out a few weeks ago and he's like oh my god you go on a girl's trip i'll go on a guy's trip and in return i'll pay for your plane ticket for you to go and i was like mm, but 
I don't know, kind of a trip, to, you know, with my girlfriends seemed like a good idea. So I agree. Now, as I'm taking off to go to Mexico, I realize this man has only bought me an economy seat. And like, that's fine. Don't get me wrong. But if you are a man and you mess up Valentine's Day to go on a boy's trip and you're sending your girl off somewhere else, at least get her like a Delta Comfort seat. But I was, you know, in the back in economy and it was fine. So I take off heading off to Mexico with my girlfriends and we get to Mexico hanging out having a great time and all of a sudden I see this guy's Instagram story that looks just like where I'm at and it was a guy who I had met in Atlanta um, out and about but he had moved to a different state and so we kind of kept in touch with each other but just as friends I met him when he had a girlfriend he had me whenever I had a boyfriend so the second that I see that we are literally in the same place, same location, I reach out and I was like, hey, we should all get together because everyone knew each other who was associated with this group. And let me tell you, this man, beautiful, probably the most beautiful man I've ever seen in my entire life. And I'll just go ahead and have to say we're going to need a part two because I need to continue and I'm getting hot thinking about how cute this guy is. I caught my boyfriend cheating, at least I think. Not physically cheating, at least not that I know of, but I did find some inappropriate Instagram messages with multiple different women. He says he got carried away and will stop, but nowhere on his social media does he even acknowledge that he's in a relationship. We've been dating for almost two years. We've traveled together. We've met our families and my friends really like him, but he refuses to message those girls to let them know that he is in a relationship with me. So they all think that they have a chance with him. His excuse was that he's over it and that's why he doesn't want to tell these girls that he's in a relationship and I'm clearly not over it. He just acts like he does not want to acknowledge our relationship at all. And we all know it's because he wants to continue to cheat or to get away with previous cheating. But how do I get him to admit this? He's obviously trying to gaslight the situation but I need to know if it's not me who's going crazy. Let me know what you guys think she should do in the comments. I have a little bit more information for the no, both of you. No, no. But brilliant. I love this. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Whatever. This, this may add a little bit more context. Oh, my God. I didn't even clock that there was another person. <laughs> right. Okay. So, Zoe continues. The moment it dawned on me that I loved Mitch was a really complicated one. It was the day we found out he has stage two <gasps> testicular cancer. Oh, this is the twist of all twists. I can't. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> I had no idea at the time that oh. Mitch was even getting checked for anything. I rocked up to the house to hang out with Xavier and all of the family was huddled together around the couch. Xavier was so wrapped up in what was happening that he forgot I was even coming over. Mm. When I looked at Mitch that day, he was so scared and vulnerable. I realized that what I was feeling went beyond concern for a loved one or a family member. It was unmistakably oh, romantic God. love. No. That love has only deepened with time. After his diagnosis, Mitch moved back home to have the support of his parents and brother. That's when I started seeing him whenever I slept over at the house. And that's when this god awful situation of me, you know, loving him, went from serious to potentially life changing. Mitch is still going through treatment, but the doctors are extremely positive and hopeful that he'll essentially be back to his life as a healthy 24 year old soon. So it's not as if I'm in love with the dying brother. I'm in love with the brother who had a significant health scare, but who will almost certainly bounce back to who he was before. But Mitch's cancer diagnosis was like a big glowing arrow in my life and it showed me exactly what I want or at least who I think I want to spend my life with. Oh no Gemma, I fear this has muddied the waters for me a little bit. The Reddit title for this one reads, My girlfriend invited her ex over to my apartment and I'm absolutely livid right now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I live in a big city in my own apartment. My girlfriend, Lily, lives with her roommates, but if I'm being honest, she basically lives here over 80% of the time. Earlier today, while I was at the gym with my friend Mike, she texted me that she had an old friend and she hasn't seen them in a while, and then it would be nice to have a quiet place to catch up. I said they could use my apartment and that I'd go out for dinner with Mike so they'd have time to catch up. 
It's very generous. Yeah, <laughs> with a boyfriend. <laughs> During this time, I'm at the gym, so I was in no rush. I didn't ask who she was inviting over, etc., etc. Well, apparently I should have asked, as the old friend she was apparently catching up alone with in my apartment was her ex-boyfriend, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Around 30-ish minutes after this conversation, I get a text from her saying that they're at the apartment. <laughs> I just said, bet. What does that mean? <laughs> I think that's an American thing. I don't think right. we get that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I just said, bet, and continued with my friend. Mike and I finished working out around 7pm and decided to go to Whole Foods as their... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm reading this and I'm like, potentially should have edited this out, but I'm going to go for it. <laughs> They decided they'd go to Whole Foods as their hot salad bars are great. <laughs> Slay. We ate there and finished around 8.30. When I walked into my apartment, I see some big Timberland boots that are obviously a man's. I'm immediately like, fuck, her friend brought her boyfriend and I'm going to have to stay up and socialize now. I take off my shoes and jacket and start heading down the hallway. As I enter the living area, I see my girlfriend sitting on the couch with a man at separate ends, but staring right at each other, talking. Oh my god. My girlfriend notices me and jumps a little. I didn't really find this odd at the time, but now thinking back, it all makes sense. At this point, I'm still completely oblivious. I say hello and start walking towards the man. The man. The mysterious <laughs> the man. man. <laughs> I'm looking around the house at this point for her friend, honestly. I just thought she was in the bathroom or some shit. Sorry, did she say that her friend was a woman? or I did... think that these guys just assumed. Assuming. that like, oh, my girlfriend must only have female friends. Oh, God. Is, I think, the assumption. Okay. I shake the guy's hand and say some shit like, hey, I'm Lily's boyfriend. He replied in a cocky ass way with some, I'm Kyle, Lily's ex. I was like, oh, my, my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I also didn't realize I'd be reading out dialogue, but alas, here we are. <laughs> I was like, oh, my fault. I thought you were her friend's boyfriend. Then it got a little quiet and I rapidly came to the realization that my girlfriend had been alone with her ex in my apartment for the last couple of hours. Oh my God. So what? <laughs> That's so weird. At this point, I'm fed up. Only like a minute or so has passed since my question to her. And I look at him and I ask Kyle, hey, do you mind ending it here for today? Bro. I actually got some things I have to talk to Lily about. Oh, God. <laughs> like what? I can't believe you sat on the opposite corner of a couch to your ex. I can't believe you have a friend that is a male. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> he said, she invited me over, though, and we're still reminiscing about the good old days. Oh, God. <laughs> I look at Lily and she can't even look me in the eye. I look back at Kyle and say, all right, let me rephrase this. This is my apartment and I'm telling you to leave. He then looks at her and says, do you want me to leave? Oh my God. At this point, I'm not proud of it, but I completely lose my shit. (gasps) Lily's telling me to calm down and then he proceeds to leave. I want to know how much he knows about the ex. Yeah, potentially she's spoken about him before, which is why he feels so like fishy about this guy. I still am a bit sus though, because you should be allowed to hang out with your ex. And it not be a big deal. Interesting. A lot of the comments on this thread disagree with you. Really? Yeah. They're siding with this guy, with the boyfriend. That's so weird. Yeah. Because I am so pro ex can be friends. I wonder if they if they maybe ended things kind of up in the air. And maybe it was like nothing was really properly tied. But neatly. they're on opposite ends of the couch though. <laughs> it's so, so interesting. innocent. So there's a little bit more Eilish. Okay. A little bit more. So this Kyle guy ends up leaving. Okay. And then Lily says, to this guy that his reaction was bullshit and that he acted like an ass. Then she said she's done talking and storms out. The Reddit thread continues. I didn't say anything. I didn't chase her and I haven't reached out. I just sat on the couch and thought about what the fuck just happened. The end. Why haven't they talked? Is there any like updates or anything? I think that that was kind of where they left things off and he's just really mad sitting in his fury. That's so stupid. There's no context. I Yeah, I do think that like... I can kind of see where he's coming from if he was caught off guard, but I wonder if she could have just given him a little bit more details from the get-go, like, I'm catching up with an old friend. Oh, by old friend, I mean old boyfriend. Maybe yeah. that was, like, the clarification that he needed. But but judging from, like, his character that I'm sensing from this Reddit thread, he potentially wouldn't have reacted very well anyway if well, she did yeah, tell him. it seems like he's like, oh, my God, there's Timberland boots at my door. My girlfriend must be seeing a man. Yeah, I'm the only man that belongs in her life. That's so, yeah, I feel like that's really unfair. And if you feel like you can't have an honest conversation with your partner about who you're meeting up with, then there's something 
There's something wrong. Yeah, I don't necessarily think that this relationship sounds like the healthiest to me. But no. But no. again, I think we need more content. Yes. This one reads, I'm pregnant and my husband has been sleeping with my mother. <laughs> oh my God. <gasps> no, I, I hate these ones where like parents are involved. I, 26 female, have found out my husband, 30 male, is having sex with my mother, 52 female. Oh. I honestly don't know how to react. I'm four months pregnant and I'm trying not to stress since it's bad for the baby. I honestly had suspicions. This is not funny. Why am I smiling? I feel like I'm so nervous about this story. I honestly had suspicions that my husband was cheating. When I announced my pregnancy, he seemed happy. Over the moon, actually. He was kissing me and telling me how lucky he was to have me. But then he changed. About two weeks after my announcement, he stopped hugging me and kissing me like usual. He stopped eating the meals that I would make for him after work and he'd say that he already ate some fast food or something on his way home. I also noticed that he had changed his lock screen, which was a photograph of us. I found out about the affair three days ago. I went through his phone while he was in the shower and I found texts, messages, videos. I'm sick to my stomach thinking about what I saw. I saw pictures of my mum in lingerie and he was replying with pictures of his own. That is... Oh, that really? is putrid. Oh my god. I'm like... My, my breakfast is like... It's resurfacing. giving gag reflex. <laughs> <laughs> I even saw a message of regret. He said that they should maybe stop doing what they're doing because he didn't want to hurt me. But my mum said I wouldn't get hurt as long as it all stayed a secret. What angered me the most was the message she sent him a few days ago. I'll quote it here so anyone reading can get an idea of how serious their affair is and has been. So this is what the mum sent the husband. Oh I love you so much, more than you think. You've helped me through the passing of my beloved and for that I truly thank you. I know how hard it is for you to keep a secret like this. For me it is too. I love my daughter with all my heart but she will have to accept eventually that love is love and the heart wants what it wants. Our hearts just want each other. I thought that ever since my husband died, nobody would ever love me because I'm just an old woman, but you have shown me to love myself and you have made me feel young and sexy again. Let's keep cherishing each other. For context, this is now back to the girl writing the Reddit thread. My father passed away about five years ago from a stroke and my mum said she refused to get back into dating or romance because my father is, quote, her forever love and only and only. It's absolute bullshit. I'm fucking crushed. And it's the fact that I know that they had sex after that message because that night he didn't come home until 1am due to work and paid overtime. I have screenshots of the messages and have sent the videos to myself. Of course, I deleted them on his phone so it looked like he never sent me anything. But I'm numb. I'm confused. I'm hurt. I can't even cry because I refuse to believe it. My husband's at work. I'm sitting on the edge of our bed writing this. Any advice, please. I'm desperate for just a little bit of anything. The baby in me is honestly the only thing preventing me from a confrontation. I'm afraid that confronting them now will only cause me much more stress and anger and I want the best for myself and my child. At this point, all I want to do is have my child. Oh my God, that is so disrespectful on the husband and the mother's part. Also, like, I just don't think there's a world where if I was this woman writing this Reddit thread yeah. where I would get over this. Yeah, no. I... I it's like it's just so big i think my main advice would be get out of the house yeah asap like find somewhere else to live do not be in that situation and unfortunately you're gonna have to cut your mum and your husband ASMR out of your life like you can't come unpacking. back from this kind of betrayal no i've got a an odd question yeah is there a set of circumstances in which this would be perceived from some angles as a romantic love story between because remember that book club book we read for shameless book club i knew you were gonna go here <laughs> no <Annabelle>. <laughs> <laughs> I love you I'm just a, posing the question. You have <laughs> such a pure heart that you're trying to see the best in everyone. But let me with my evil black heart come in and say, no, you can grieve your husband all you want. Your daughter's husband is off limits. Same for the daughter's husband. I don't care what is going on in his life. Your wife's mum is off limits. You're both... If you're not bad people, you have been behaving like terrible people. So she does not deserve this. And I don't know if you're capable of this level of betrayal now, what is he capable of as a husband for the next 30 or 40 years? And a father to your future child. Yeah, fuck that. Like, I, I don't know if you can cut him out of your child's life. And then do you cut the, the, the grandma? Yeah. The future grandma out of it. That's a different question for now. Get out of that house. Yes. My wife has become a militant vegan and I can't stand it anymore. 
Okay. My wife became a vegetarian three years ago during lockdown. When she told me she wanted to change her diet, I told her that was fine, but not to expect me or the kids to follow along with her. I would not expect her to cook me meat. And if we were eating together, I would make sure to either cook vegetarian or make sure to cook meat separately from everything else. This worked well. There was literally no problems until this year. At first, it started with her getting a bit preachy about things. She would start to tell me, all the kids, how unhealthy meat was, how cruel the industry was, yada yada. She went vegan soon after, and it has been a living hell since then. A few months ago, out of nowhere, she told me that animal products would not be allowed in the house at all. Obviously, she does not just get to say that. I brought up the fact that she agreed that the rest of the family would not have to follow her diet. Our kids are teens, and I'm a fully grown adult. She had a tantrum. A full-on toddler tantrum when I told her this. Now she chastises me and the kids whenever she sees us eating meat. She tried to get the kids to watch documentaries with her and has meltdowns when they don't want to. She got into a fight with her dad and refused to go to his birthday celebration because they refused to only have a vegan cake. I don't know what happened. I've tried to talk to her about this and she loses her cool with me every time. My kids are absolutely tired of it. Our son makes fun of her behind her back all the time now, and I'm less and less inclined to stop him. Our daughter refuses to be around her now and tells me when she moves out of the house, she will never talk to her mum unless something changes. I just want my wife back, not whatever activist monster she's become. Oh, wow. A very different kind of Reddit thread today. I have a question, a bit of a sidebar question. If your partner said, I want to be vegan, would you, how would you respond? Well, I would respect his choice. Mm -hmm. Totally, like do whatever you want, but don't expect me to also do that unless I generally want to do it myself. Like yeah. obviously like I would try and like, you know, accommodate as much as I can, but like if it's not something I truly believe in, I'm not going to do it well. Yeah. But I'm, I would totally respect his decision. What about you? Oh, I would be the same. I also think I just, I'm curious to know how my behavior would change if yeah. I would slowly end up adopting a vegan lifestyle as well if my partner was doing that too it's interesting here a family dynamic is very different there are kids involved and the way their children have responded is very interesting this secret comes from listener georgia my mum passed away last year and my secret the thing i can't tell anyone is that i feel relieved that she's gone let me explain i always had a complicated relationship with my mum growing up She had a lot of expectations of what my life should look like and what our relationship should look like. She was a single mum and I was her only daughter and she wanted us to be super close. And for a long time, I wanted that too. But then when I was at uni, I fell in love with someone and that person was another girl. Let's call her Holly. I was raised Catholic and when I told my mum about Holly, she was concerned about the fact that I was in a same-sex relationship. Oh, mum, not okay. Yep. She said, that's not you. That's not who I want you to be. That's not the expectation I had for you. And I agreed with her. I was like, you're right. I'm not gay, mum. So I broke up with Holly. But I realised that this wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to be happy. Within a couple of weeks, Holly and I ended up getting back together. We kept our relationship a secret for a year before finally telling my family. My mum reluctantly accepted it, but it was hard. I think a lot of my family also saw it as a phase. That was kind of the first experience of me going against my mum's expectations. But it was like mum saw every step in my relationship with Holly as a step away from her. For example, when I decided to move out, mum was absolutely devastated. Over the next few years, I was just constantly trying not to disappoint her. There was also a lot of pressure to do everything with her. She expected me to call every day. She expected me to always live in the same area as her. She would get really upset if I couldn't make it to family dinner or stay over after a big family event. So much so that she would call me multiple times to discuss why I wasn't going and telling me that as her daughter, I had to be there. If I was going on a trip, I would be really nervous to tell mum because she would say she wanted to come or she'd demand I spend the whole day before I leave with her. While I was actually on holiday, she would message me asking when I was going to come over once I was home. And then finally, when I would get home and go and visit, I wouldn't be able to leave just after a couple of hours. She'd tell me I couldn't leave, that I must stay for dinner, that actually I must sleep there too. I honestly felt like I was always letting her down, that I was never able to be who she needed. 
I realized maybe a year before she passed away that nothing I was ever going to do was going to make her happy. I was never going to be enough. Then she got sick. When we were in the hospital and she was passing away, I just felt relief. It was the first time I could make decisions and not worry about how she would receive them. I didn't have to disappoint her anymore. I didn't have to let her down. I miss her, of course. I absolutely miss her. It was so sad to lose her. Her life was valuable and she was a great mum at times. And sometimes I think, oh, it would be nice if she was here to see this moment or that moment. But if she could actually come back, I don't think I would want her back. It's hard to grieve someone and then also be relieved that they're gone. I don't know if I believe in heaven, but sometimes I feel like I shouldn't think these things because I don't want her to know that I feel relieved that she's gone. It's a horrible thing to think. I don't think many people who've lost parents feel the way I do. Oh my God, that's so hard. Very hard. Oh, Georgia. I'm thinking of you, Georgia. This Reddit thread reads, I am 16 weeks pregnant today. At four weeks, I called my then boyfriend sobbing because I was pregnant. I was upset because I'm career oriented, but ultimately decided to keep the baby. Okay. He broke up with me over the phone. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and blocked me because he said it was unfair that I didn't get an abortion. He said I was basically making the choice for him. I understand his point of view. I don't agree with it, though. So I let it go and I moved on. I went to my appointments by myself, found out the gender and started decorating the baby room. Good for you. Mm hmm. I finally felt happy and had completely moved on from the huge act of betrayal I faced early on. I legitimately felt so good about myself, the pregnancy, my life. Things were so, so good. Mm. You can sense a turn, can't you? I can sense a turn in this Mm -hmm. story. Okay. Yesterday, my ex called me from a blocked number and asked to talk. I was cautious and considered saying no, but I thought if he finally came to his senses and wanted to be involved, I needed to hear him out. Very kind of this person, Mm -hmm. okay? I know, we love this person. I know, this person seems like fantastic. An angel. This guy, on the other hand? Mm, Uh -uh. Shit. Instead, he tells me his new girlfriend, who he's dated for, he told me about 84 days, is pregnant. Oh my gosh. He called me because he thought I would be happy for him because (laughs) I have moved on and I am happy with my life. That isn't how it works, buddy. Men should just not speak. Yeah, just... (laughs) (laughs) he's going to be involved and supportive to the new girl and their child but has not changed his mind on being involved with ours i gave him a chance to explain but it ended with me confirming to him that he would never again hear from me i changed my phone number this morning i know i'm pregnant and need to be strong but jesus christ i wouldn't wish the feeling i have on a single other person on this earth i feel so unwanted so useless so immensely miserable i don't know how i can move forward I can't tell anyone about this because it's such an embarrassing thing. How do you even pick yourself up after feeling this devastated? I'm going to (laughs) cry. Oh, no, Justine. (laughs) Ladies and gents, Justine's a crier. I'm a crier. (laughs) But also, this story is incredibly sad, especially the fact that she feels embarrassed. Like, yeah, you've done nothing wrong. I'm literally got to Oh, no. (laughs) Pull yourself together. I'm trying. I just feel really bad for this person because... Like, this guy is shit. Like, yeah. he is just the epitome of a terrible guy. Um, Not being supportive at the start, not respecting, like, her choice as the person carrying this, this child. Mm. And then going and being with someone else and standing by them when they're pregnant after only dating for 84 days. Yes. And also, I don't buy the idea that he thinks telling her that he's going to be a part of this other child's life. I don't buy <laughs> that he thought that she was going to be happy after hearing that. If he did... Dear God, like, what is wrong (laughs) with some people? I started to call my co-worker a good boy. Our relationship started normal enough, but as time went by, I think he realised he could just say anything in front of me and I wouldn't react. I keep to myself at work and don't get into arguments and debates because it's just not something I like to bring into the workplace unless it's important. Okay. He is 100% sexist. He (laughs) claims his sexist remarks are all just jokes, but I can't think of a single time he was respectful to a woman. I don't do much about it because nothing warrants harassment claims, according to my boss. Oh. Who's different from this person? Are these different people? Yes, these are different people. So the boss, I guess, is hearing these complaints from this woman and saying, you know what, nothing warrants a complaint. This is a problematic workplace for many Mm -hmm. reasons. Please continue. Please continue. (laughs) Whenever I do something for him, he says... Good girl. I let it slide a few times, but I hate being called this because of the past incident, and I just think it makes me sound like a dog. I asked him casually if he could please stop calling me that, as it makes me uncomfortable. 
I didn't get mad or anything. I feel as if I was quite polite. I wouldn't be, but yeah. I, I would be like, oh, I'm so furious. I would <laughs> scream. Literally. He went on a 30-minute rant about how sensitive women are and mm. asked me if I really wanted to taint our relationship over something so trivial. Oh, my God. He's already tainted it. Uh-huh. I said no, and he fucking called me his good girl again. <laughs> And now I'm assuming that because of that, she's now decided to call him a good boy. Okay. To make sure, to, until he stops calling her a good girl, which uh, I okay. fucking love. I think that's iconic. I think that is a great move. I wonder I wonder how he'd react to that. Well, he hates being called good boy. Oh, apparently. okay. Sorry, there's more. Continue. Yes, she says, I can see it in his face, but he knows there's nothing he can do. I've been told that I'm petty and fueling the fire, but I'll stop when he does. I'm, I'm assuming that the boss is telling her that she's petty <laughs> and fueling the fire because yeah. this workplace yeah. is horrendous. Yeah. Until then, I'm not going to take his bullshit. That is the end. Okay. I, I love this woman. I love this woman. She's fantastic. I also, I love how men, some men, but this man in particular, <laughs> I love how this man is so like, like, he won't stop doing what he's doing. Yeah. But he knows what he's doing, so he can't call her out on her behaviour. He's kind of, like, trapped in this situation. Yes. <laughs> and also, I think so many people watching this video know a man like this. The man that rants for 30 minutes about how sensitive women are. Or they've, they've known of a man like this before. Yes. And have counted someone like this in their life. Oh, Yes. Please, my damn please tell us if you know someone who's like this. Describe them in great detail. Yes. And to this woman, you're doing nothing wrong. Keep yeah. doing what you're doing. <laughs> Our next secret comes from Millie. Picture this. You're dating a sweet, clever, overall, pretty perfect guy. You know, a face like Ryan Gosling's with the heart of Steve Carell. Steve Carell's heart is the purest of all hearts. (laughs) We love Mr. Carell. (laughs) You're six months into dating and 100% in love. Then, out of the blue, his ex-girlfriend gets in contact and tells him that she just gave birth to his child. A child that she hadn't told him she was carrying and needs his financial support. At first, I was absolutely gutted and my partner was in shock. It felt cataclysmic and irreparable for a relationship in its infancy. But we managed to talk it out and support each other. And he and the little girl's mother worked out a weekly visitation schedule. It took time, but I made peace with the fact that a child would now be a part of his life. My secret? Well, it's been a year now and I no longer feel that peace. In fact, I feel resentful. I've never wanted to end our relationship because my partner is the most caring, loving and genuine person I've ever been with. But the more we unpack the situation involving his ex, who he doesn't get along with well at all, and their child, the more frustrated and stuck I find myself feeling. Future living situations have to consider geographical proximity to his daughter, long-term travel is totally off the table, and the idea of us having a kid together is no longer a first. Oh, and forget buying a house, because I can't in good conscience ask my partner to spend his savings on our home when he could be saving for his child's future. It feels as though all these exciting relationship milestones that I was so looking forward to are now dictated by forces out of my control. The thought of losing this relationship makes me sick to my core. But a future where my partner and I aren't only making decisions together, but collectively with his ex, and a future where I have so little input in something as massive as a child makes me feel just as sick. I don't feel like I'm settling for a person because he's an absolute catch, but I do feel like I'm settling for a situation. Am I being too selfish and uncompromising by saying that all these little things are impacting how I want to live in the future? Am I being too stubborn in not wanting my future to go off course? And how on earth can I communicate this fear to my partner without seeming as though I am blaming him and his daughter? I fake an accent at my job. Oh, (laughs) that doesn't sound right. (laughs) My heart is pounding writing this because I literally haven't told anyone this. So I work at this one store 
and I work on the sales floor, but before all that, I was just one person interviewing for a position at the store. Before I arrived for my interview, a friend of mine dared me to interview in a British accent. Is this Ross Geller from Friends? Literally. (laughs) I said I'd only do it if they paid me, and to my surprise, they sent me like $10 through Venmo, which was more than enough for me. I went into the interview with the mindset that I wasn't going to get hired and they inevitably hired me on the spot. (laughs) Accent and all. I was nervous because I had already talked to a whole bunch of higher ups with the accent and decided to just go through with it, thinking it was only going to be a summer job. I was so wrong. Now this person runs the company. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's been like seven months. That I've been working there and I still use the accent (laughs) to this day. When people ask me where I'm from, I just tell them my hometown because I have several Brits in my family from that town who I grew up with. The accent hasn't really posed a problem until now because my boyfriend is distant friends with one of my co-workers. So I'm going to have to find the right time to come clean. What do I do? (laughs) Well, <laughs> being the avoided person that I am, mm-hmm. I would quit, but I don't think that's what you should do. <laughs> would you come clean, Eilish? I think I would. I, I mean, to be honest, I would never do the accent in the first place. Yes. $10 is not enough to keep up a British accent for the duration of my employment with mm-hmm. the company. <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't have done it either. Exactly not for $10. And also it's like... That's why my advice would be maybe to quit if the job in the first place didn't mean that much to you. Surely you can just quit, start again with your with your own accent. Yeah, with your own accent. Be yourself is the moral of this story. Yeah. <laughs> Something weird happened with my boyfriend last night and I need your advice on whether or not this is officially the world's biggest red flag. I'm guessing it already is. <laughs> <laughs> Some background. I've been with my boyfriend, Matt, for almost a year. We met through mutual friends at a birthday party. Maybe I should have been more on guard about Matt from the very beginning. Because when my mate found out we were dating, she warned me about Matt being a bit of a party boy. But I was already pretty head over heels and ignored really everything she said. Despite not being the stereotypical boyfriend type, Matt is the funniest, most attractive, endearing person I've ever met. I love him a lot. More than he loves me. If he loves me, lol, he's never actually said it. (laughs) No! I said it about three months into seeing each other. But then last night happened. Matt has always told me that he's not on Snapchat. I love Snapchat. And I use it to keep up to date with what my friendship group is doing. I never questioned that Matt doesn't have it. I guess it kind of is niche these days, and he's a little older than me. Only last night, when we were in bed together, I noticed he was trying to hide his phone from me. I feigned complete ignorance, and after he let his guard down a bit, moved my head quickly to see that yes, my suspicions were correct. He was on Snapchat. Mm. And quite clearly messaging someone on there. I asked who he was talking to, and he said he didn't remember. Classic, <laughs> classic <laughs> manoeuvre. Pa- party boy, smart boy, Matt. <laughs> oh, classic. He's a thinker. <laughs> I knew he was lying. I confronted him about it, and after about 10 minutes of insisting it was just his guy mate from high school, he came clean and told me he speaks to a girl on Snapchat that he met at uni years ago. I was so confused as to why he went to such great lengths to avoid just telling me that. All he could offer in reply was that he didn't want me to feel jealous. I want to trust him that it's all above board, but how can I when he's lied about something so cut and dry? When I asked him why he has told me for a year that he's not on Snapchat at all, he said he can't remember telling me that and maybe it was a simple miscommunication. Th- this memory is yeah. really escaping him. Get that checked out, man. <laughs> Can't remember a lot of things at the moment. Okay. Please help a confused girl out. I haven't told anyone about this yet because I'm embarrassed and I feel like I'll be judged for wanting to stick around. Am I wasting my time? Okay. Immediately, I'm like, Amy, 
He is lying blatantly and actively to you. This is all... He's like, Loki trying to gaslight her. Like, oh, this is a miscommunication on both of our parts. Like, no, Matt, this is all you. I don't like this guy. I think you should leave him. That's me being black and white. (laughs) There are no fences in sight. Uh -uh. We are not sitting on a fence. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. I completely agree. 